Il nostro intento è stato dare forma al vento, un'energia raffinata, elegante, ma allo stesso tempo forte, tenace. In sette anni abbiamo scolpito la nostra ultima opera. Noi siamo la Pagani Automobili e Guaira è il nostro vento. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today you're going to see two fascinating cars. You know, I'm a huge fan of cars that are one man's vision. Bentley, Duesenberg, Ferrari. These are guys that had a vision of what a car should be and they built it to exactly that standard. And you don't really see that much anymore, except in the case of this car. Uh, this is well, let's meet the man, Horatio Pagani. Horatio, how are you, my friend? Thank you, Welcome. And Francisco, you're the managing director of the company, yeah, and he's going to translate for us. It is such an honor to have him here at the garage and to bring these two cars. The attention to detail, the workmanship, the craftsmanship is really what sets this automobile apart from, I think, any other automobile on the planet. They're just beautifully, beautifully built and designed, and it's such a pleasure to drive. Uh, what model do we have here, Francisco? This is a Pagani Huayra. The Huayra, yeah. Now, I have seen this in the magazines and heard about it, and to see it in person is really, really amazing. Let's, let's take a look. Uh, tell us about the car. This is the, the, like we said, the Pagani Huayra. It's the second car that Pagani makes after the Zonda. It's, right. We started developing it seven years ago, and it comes from a totally different concept than the Zonda. It's just a totally new idea in a new car. Well, the Zonda, of course, was just uh, a, a record-breaking car in, in more ways than one. Just the fact that one person could produce an automobile to rival Ferrari and Bugatti and all these other cars and to rise above them, I would think, in, in many cases. Uh, it's just such a level of craftsmanship and workmanship. Uh, we, we're going to go over the details of the car. Tell us the vision of this car is different from the Zonda in what way? Diciamo che quando abbiamo fatto il progetto della Sonda, l'ispirazione è stata sono state le macchine delle Mans. Io ho sempre avuto questa passione fin da piccolo. So the inspiration of the Zonda came from Group C Le Mans cars, which right. always a favorite of his. Yeah. Um, the inspiration for this car is we to try to do something different still with the Pagani family feeling. Um, but this comes from the moment when a plane is accelerating down the runway right when it's about to take off that that rush that the plane has. Questa è stata un po' l'ispirazione. Well, I was privileged to drive one of the few Zondas in America a number of years ago. A man here in uh, California has one. Mm -hmm. And I was amazed at just how precise and how nice, how nicely balanced it was to drive. It was uh, it, quite, a, quite an experience. And we're going to take this one out in a little, in a little bit as well. Um, let's, uh, let's see the car itself. Uh, even the way the door opens. Let's open the door and show folks. Again, look at the interior of this car. Just beautifully, beautifully done. You feel like you should put on a suit and tie just to drive it. Diciamo che la, la vettura quando sei seduto dentro e quando ti regala tutta una serie di emozioni, cioè eh, sono più di well, the exterior of the car, while it's obviously very beautiful and important, is appreciated more by maybe people who are outside the car. Whereas well, when you're inside of the car, it's really the details and the craftsmanship and that, that help contribute to the emotion of driving it. I agree. I mean, to me, even just looking at this, just the shape and the design of this rearview mirror, try and draw this yourself. You won't be able to do it. It really takes an artist's eye and an artist's hand. This is one of my favorite pieces, just the way... Quello è ispirato yeah. all'occhio. It's inspired by a woman's eye. Ah. By a woman's eye. You can't get more Italian than that. <laughs> but yeah, it, I mean, you know, just the idea to put it here, put the stock out here. You know, the temptation always to put it right on the door. But I always loved the, the early mirrors and whatnot. that had the mirrors way up front, you know. And to me, that's beautifully done. I mean, every detail. Uh, let's tell us about the power plant. Well, the motor of this machine is created by 
Mercedes AMG. The motor, like with the Zonda, was developed by AMG Mercedes, um, which has been a long partner for Pagani. It's the first time that AMG has developed a, uh, a motor with its own engine code for an outside supplier. It's a six liter twin turbo V12, um, puts out more than 700 horsepower and more than 800 newton meters of torque. And you know, if you've been to this website, we've been to the AMG factory. Beautiful, beautiful engines, handmade. Uh, and to me, it's just the perfect blend of Italian artistry and German technology. I mean, you have a car that is incredibly dependable. I think uh, Mercedes-Benz is the largest builder of V12 engines in the world. And of course, AMG is one of the greatest engine builders in the world. So to combine that with the artistry and the eye of an Italian designer and 700 horsepower, it doesn't get any better than that. I mean, look at the detail in that uh, shift linkage. So our, a lot of our customers tend to be um, not necessarily young children, and so they appreciate the nostalgia that's given by something like the, the shift knob. So that piece there, 70 pieces, is made just to have the nostalgia of the shifting. You still have the modern paddles behind the wheel. So a, as you probably know, most instrument dials on cars often are made out of plexiglass or some other rather right. inexpensive material. Um, we have chosen to turn them into jewelry, essentially. These are um, milled and then hand polished Beautiful. by um, technicians yeah. who make some of the best watch faces in the world. Yeah. Um, wow. It's made out of a material called Rodier. Get that. Now, if maybe a normal instrument cluster of dials cost you know, 50 euro or less, these cost us 5,000 euro. Wow. And un altro dettaglio. Oh, yeah. Tutte le we could have just made these out of stamped metal right. perhaps, but yeah. these are all milled. Um, you can see on the back all the mounting points for the, yeah. for the metal so it doesn't vibrate off the, the machine. It's, um, and then Beautiful. it's hand, hand finished. <laughs> and, and of course the carbon fiber is impeccable. I mean look at that, just the way. Uh, if, if you've never worked with carbon fiber, it is very, very hard to get it as beautiful as this. And obviously, that's the natural carbon fiber with a clear coat. Yes, exactly. Yeah, beautifully. This is the first production car in the world that has, it uses a carbon titanium. Um, together. And together. So wow. there's a strand of titanium, that, it's a wire basically, that's actually woven into the carbon fiber. And that, um, wow. that's what we use for the tub on the car. Wow. The rest of the car is carbon fiber. The technical properties of carbon titanium compared to carbon fiber aren't at that different from a right. rig rigidity and weight standpoint. What they do though is um, when you design a car like this, it's very important to think about the safety aspects, obviously, because these are very high performance cars. And in an event of a crash, the carbon titanium, uh, tie the titanium ties together the carbon structure much more right. and it makes it much, much safer than what would already be a very safe uh, carbon fiber. All of the hardware, almost more than 1,200 bolts are all titanium, designed by us, and they all have a little Pagani logo on them, so it's a... Uh, right, right. Nicely done. Oh, look at this that. This is the key. Oh, look at that. And the nice thing about this key, how does this go? Oh, yep. you see, when you put it in your pocket, <laughs> makes you look bigger. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. this. Well, that's beautiful. beautiful. Eh, ti voglio, mi permetto di raccontarti un po' quello che è la filosofia della nostra compagnia. He'd like to describe a little bit the philosophy behind Pagani. Yes. That's okay. Quando ero un ragazzo... So even when, from a very young age, he's always had a incredible passion for cars. And um, starting when he was very young, he was always already making little designs out of, uh, you know, balsa wood. And so when, when he was young, he was trying to understand whether to follow a more scientific path or a more artistic one. Um, when he was 13 or 14 years old, he read an article in an American magazine, Reader's Digest, he believes, uh, where he learned about Leonardo da Vinci, who um, combined art with science. And that um, sort of gave him an inspiration as to you know, where, he, where he wanted to go with his but see, life. See, Leonardo da Vinci never had to design his art around government regulations. So that's what makes him the new Leonardo da Vinci. Well, Imagine yeah. Leonardo, no, no, you can't, you can't do that, you gotta have the hands down here, you can't like that, no. It's a, I see, the fact that you can build and design a car in this day and age, in this world, with all the regulations and so on, so, is amazing to me. I mean, the fact that you have a car that is 
it's safe and strong. Because, you know, a lot of people say it's impossible to build a beautiful car anymore because of the regulations, headlights, you know, what with this kind of thing. And you, you, you prove that is wrong. This is truly a beautiful, beautiful automobile. And the fact that it's done with all the regulations and the things that stop you from doing what you really want to do, it's amazing to me. It's important, though, that, you know, this philosophy of Leonardo helps kind of guide the company. And um, when the, design, the him and Mr. Pagani and the design team start developing a car, they have this vision that, uh, you know, the car has to have follow certain parameters, but it also has to be buildable within certain costs, obviously. It has to follow homologation requirements. So it right. helps, helps um, focus them into uh, to what we have here. Yeah. Tanto per dar un esempio. You know, se when you build a house, often you have an architect who mm -hmm. designs the house and then you give it to a contractor who builds the house. And the architect designer maybe isn't aware of all the technical or practical issues that the contractor builder has to deal with and that can cause issues. At Pagani, the design team is a kind of a hybrid between designers and engineers. And so the same team starts from a blank sheet right. of paper and then designs the whole car. And that helps, you know, uh, ensure True. that. And like I said, and, and you can tell him. To me, I love the idea that it is one man's vision of what a car should be, so it remains pure all the way through. You know, so many cars don't look like anything because the input from this, input from that. Everybody, everybody has their say. When you have one person, this is what I want. This is the way I want to build it. I, that's what I like. I like that that singular focus on one idea, one vision and you build the car, and the car costs whatever it costs to get it right. That's what I like. The car has, for him, the car has to look like a solid piece, just sculptured, sculpted from a, a solid, like it has to be a single language, a single vision, just all integrated. Can we open it up and see some of the, uh, oh, there we go. Oh. Okay. This motor isn't, you know, a traditional kind of big bang turbo delivery. We work very hard to smooth the, smooth out the power delivery to something a little bit um, more similar, perhaps, to a naturally aspirated car. Right. Especially because in this car, which is so light, this car weighs only 1,350 kilos. So, so it's that's about slightly less than 3,000 pounds. Well, 2,950, right. I believe. Um, it would be probably dangerous to have that um, kind of turbo turbo yeah, yeah. boom at the end. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the gearbox is a um, seven-speed um, box made by Extrac. Okay. It's uh, Extrac, as you may know, is one of the premier suppliers for racing gearboxes. Twenty-four cars in Le Mans this year were running their gearboxes. Right. Um, this gearbox is exceptionally light, and it uh, it helps reduce the uh, the weight on the back of the car and reduce the polar momentum. It's a double clutch, no. It's a single single Sing clutch. Single clutch. Okay. All the suspension components are forged Avionol, which okay. is a very, very expensive uh, um, aircraft grade aluminum. Mm -hmm. uh, what piece is this? So this is the wheel hub, and ah. it's a piece that he's very, very proud of. You can see it holds, you know, has the the brake, the main caliper, the handbrake caliper. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooling for the pad and for the discs. Gotcha. Um, it's made, this is forged with three different, in three different um, forms, and then it's milled and hand polished. Beautiful. And this maybe weighs <coughs> half as much as it, you yeah. know, a typical high performance yeah. car. So this piece, like all of the suspension on the Wira, was actually carried over and developed on the Zonda R, okay. which um, was our is our track only car that um, well, ha currently has you know, a pseudo record on the Nurburgring. Um, yeah, that's right. You have the yeah, that's that's great. And um, and they, they were carried over directly. You know, they they worked with slicks and solid mounted bushings, and on the why uh, they use rubber mounted bushings, right, but otherwise right. it's exactly the same. The exhaust is all titanium as well and maybe costs as much as your Fiat Cinquecento down there. It does, it does. I know how that works. I know how that works. But see, that's what's fascinating to me because not since uh, Antero Bugatti has there been a small manufacturer building their unique vision of a car. You know, Lamborghini, all these others, these are all a division of someone else. They all belong to a big company. This is a small company. How many people work at Pagani? Circa 60 persona. About 60 people. About 60 people. Mm -hmm. 60 people. So it's not a huge factory. So each part, uh, that's what I find fascinating. To me, uh, uh, Bugatti lived the ideal life. He had that house in the country, and he had his factory, and all the workers, and they all everything came out of there. 
And that's what's beautiful about this. I mean, it's a pretty amazing automobile. I mean, what you have here, I think, is the perfect fusion of artistic and mechanical together. I don't think there's any, any other car being made today that really combines those two as much as the Bugatti. Can we start it up here, what it sounds mm -hmm. like? So, Genial. Okay. variabile eh, parte da 0.31 che è ottimo per una supercar e arriva fino a 0.37 a secondo come come il, il, il momento in cui sta girando la macchina the drag coefficient varies based on the right. systems but it varies from about uh, 30.31 to wow. a 0.37 wow. yeah sure. okay. now because this car is so expensive and it's not really legal for me to drive it. Uh, Mr. Bagandi is going to drive, but that's a, a great thrill. So let's let's hop in here. Well, here we go. Pretty exciting. The feeling in this the the airplane. Yeah. Very important the comfort of the car. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, air, the airplane, the. I hear it. The comfort is okay for you? Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful. How many Zonda in America? How many? Five? Three, four. Three, four. It's, it's beautiful to see this car when it is parked in the garage, but to see it out on the street with other cars, you realize how beautiful it is, how low it is, how artistic it is. It looks like nothing else on the road. Can the design in my company. Yeah. Every small detail. That's beautiful. The, the carbon fiber, the producing the carbon fiber for, for the car is in, inside. In house, yeah, yeah. yeah. turbos kick in it is just unbelievable what is the top speed in this car here? three five seven kilometers about 225 amazing no, I don't want to leave that's why I'm not getting out uh, what a thrill and what an honor to have Mr. Bogani here at my garage to uh, show us this fantastic car. And although I didn't get to drive it, I will it sometime. So, uh, the Leonardo da Vinci of the automotive world. Horatio, thank you, my friend. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week.